Welcome to Discovering in Color. The channel is designed to show you just how easy it is to spend time in the outdoors and have a lot of fun while you're doing it. So today we're gonna to talk about power in the outdoors. Things you need to power up all those wonderful little electronic devices. And I'm gonna show you battery power and today I'm gonna to show you some uses of solar power to help you out if you're out there for an extended period of time. So we'll start with small. This little small battery right here, it's a Bruton battery. It's a little 2,500 milliamp hour battery, so it's very small. It's got solar panels on the front, and it's got a little indicator on the back to tell you how much power you have. It's got one USB output and one micro USB input for charging. You can also charge it with the solar panels. Now be advised, this is a very, very small solar panel, so it's gonna take quite a while to charge with this, probably two or three days if you're at zero in the sun sitting out for about eight hours. I also carry this cable. This is an all-in-one cable. It's an older cable because it actually has one of the older Apple cables. It's got a lightning cable and it's got a micro USB cable, but it's a way to carry stuff without having to carry three or four cables. I actually do have an older iPod that I use this for, but Shorter cables are always the best because you're just gonna lose less power over a shorter cable than you will over a longer cable. And I carry all of this in a nice little Ziploc bag here. This is actually another USB-C cable that I carry in here. Next up, I have this Anchor. It's a 13,000 milliamp hour battery. And this one has four lights across the front to tell you the charging where it's at. Every time a dot disappears, you've used up 25% of your power. It does have a light that you can use. A little small one there. Handy, but not too handy. It's got two USB outputs on it. It's got a one amp output and it's got a two amp output. So you can charge two items at a time. It also has a micro USB charging port. This is my newer battery that I carry because it's a little bit lighter. It's, a, it's a, probably about 50 grams lighter than this anchor battery here. And it's the same thing. It's got two charging ports. Excuse me, it's got two ports you can use to charge off of, and it's got a micro USB input. It's got three little dots right here that tell you power from 100% down every 25%. It doesn't have a light on it, but that's okay. I don't really need a light for this, and I've never used it for it anyway. And I also carry a couple of extra cables with that. Moving up, this one here by Charge Labs, this is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. So this is a big boy right here, and you really want to think about it if you're going to use this for backpacking. It has a solar panel on the front that can be used to charge, although it's a small panel and it'll take quite a while. It'll take a couple of days to get this 20,000 milliamp hour uh, battery here to charge using just this one solar panel. On the back, it does have a wireless area right here. So if you have a wireless uh, phone or, or something like that, you can actually turn this on and lay it on top and it will charge the device wirelessly. It has three USB power ports here on the front and it's got one micro USB input here on the side. It also has a it's nice little gadget here because when it's charging in the sun, the light turns green. And if you wanna use it for light, this one's a little more effective than what you'll see these are here. All you have to do is you push it twice and you get a flashing light. This is a flashing SOS light. You can get a steady bright light and you can also dim that down. One push knocks it down by one, another push knocks it down again, and a third push gives you a flashing strobe mode. So it's a good little gadget to have, but like I said, if you're gonna take it backpacking, you might wanna think twice. Next up, as we move up in size here, is this RAV Power charger right here. This one I never take backpacking because it's a 13,000, excuse me, it's a 28 milliamp hour battery. This one's a little nice because it's got a lot more lights here to see what's going on. As we moved up in power, this one actually has a 120 volt output right here. So you could power a something very small um, AC appliance. It's got two USB outputs. It's got a USB-C input on here. And this is a power port. This is not a standard power input. You need a special charger for this. So that's one of the reasons that you're not gonna take it backpacking because there's no way to charge this out using solar power. But this one right here is, is, is great. I've taken it on airlines. I will let you know that you want to check with your airline before you take this because some do have restrictions on the, on the size of battery that you can carry on board. 
Moving up here, the second from the top. This is the Suwaki portable charger here. This one can be charged using solar power. It's got a nice handle on top so you can carry it. It's got lights here on the front. That way you can tell what the charge is and the less lights you see, the lower the charge is. It has four USB power ports on the back. One of them is a quick charge port. It's got a DC input here. It's got lights if you wanted to use lights. And it's got a 12 volt power support power source here on the back. So once again, this right here is very nice. I take this on if I'm going to be camping for two or three days. This is nice to power. I have lights that I put up in this canopy and I usually use it for that as well as to charge up my phone or something like that. And then finally, we have the big boy right here. This is this Suwaki charger right here. It has 113,000 milliamp hours of power to it. This will power you for a couple of days if you use it correctly. It has two AC ports on the front, and this will actually run a small LED television for about five or six hours. It also has a regular 12 volt car port here. It's got USB outlets. It's got a solar charging panel here. It's got pretty much everything that you need this to do. This thing will do for a short period of time. You can also charge both of these right here using some of the solar systems I'm about to show you here in a few minutes. The next one is my big solar system, which is my 100 watt solar panel. I've used that to charge up this big one here, and I've also used it to charge this one here. So with that, we're going to move on and show you how we can charge these using solar power. Now these four panels here, these are part of my 100 watt solar array. When you put all these together, you get about 100 watts of power on a perfectly bright sunny day. Today's a very sunny day, and these probably aren't providing quite 100 watts of power. I would probably say 60 to 70 watts of power. But these, when used together, nested together, will pretty much charge anything that you need to charge. These are very useful for a long trip, a long base camping trip for maybe four, five, six days, and you're not going to have any access to power uh, for quite a while. Um, you can also use them individually if you need to. Uh, you can use one panel or two panels, depending on how you want to put it together, because there's a nice cable on the back that you can put these in into another. You can share them with somebody else if you wanted to, say somebody needed to use one. Just disconnect it, let them share it for a while. This smaller solar panel, this is a Suwaki 35 watt portable solar panel here. The panels fold up. And inside here, it's got a USB connector and this first little storage pouch right here, which you can use to store any kind of cables or something that you might have. You can put them into here. And that's the USB connector on the front. It opens up. To show you this array of nine solar panels here, four, 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 and five. So you've got nine solar panels to provide up to 35 watts of power. On this one here, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna charge this small battery right here. This is our little Anchor 13,000 milliamp hour battery. So all we do is we take our power connector and plug it in. Take the USB end over here and we plug that in here. And now you can't see it but the lights are on and flashing. And we reset here. And now our battery is charging. If that battery were at zero with this panel right here, it provides up to 35 watts of power. That's in perfect optimal conditions. I'm talking bright blue sun, no clouds, no haze, no fog, no nothing. Right now it's probably providing about 20 to 25 watts of power, even though it's very bright and sunny out here. And this can be used in a lot of different configurations. It's got loops here. So these can be hung up on the side of the canopy if you wanted to. It can be put on top of the canopy and uh, tied down. I would not recommend trying to put this on a backpack or something like that because it's too heavy and you'd be pretty tired throughout the day. They do have some that do go on backpacks and there's some portable ones. They're very flexible. They're not good on a lot of the East Coast trails like the AT, the Appalachian Trail, because you get in that green tunnel and there's just not enough sunlight coming through to give you any type of a charge. When you get out west, the CDT or the PCT, now there you're going to get a lot of sun out on those open areas down in the desert and it can provide some benefit. But I'd recommend if you bring the right size battery for your needs, you'll be able to make it from town to town without having to worry about power. So with that, I wanna thank you all for watching. 
Um, everything you see here is bought with my own money. I don't get compensated for any of this stuff here. So if you like the video, please subscribe to it and also hit the like button if you liked it. Please share the video with your friends and thank you very much for watching and hope to see you guys out there on the trail, especially when everything reopens here very soon. Thanks. Bye.